A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. In this video, I'm gonna give you seven New Year's resolution ideas that will massively improve your photography. I absolutely love landscape photography. It is a massive passion and has been for over 30 years. And there's something that's sort of untangible. You can't really talk about it. You can't really explain it. You can't really visualize it until you're actually out one sunrise or sunset and you just see something super special. It might be a rainbow because it's raining. It might be just the sun just coming up in a super special way. It might be a mountain hare. It might be a murmuration of birds but there's just something that's amazing about it. But sometimes you lose that mojo, you lose the impetus to go out. I've certainly done that so many times in the past, but when you're out, you just think this is the best thing I ever did. So what I've done is I've put together seven things that you can do in 2019 to really, really improve your photography and get out and take some photos. And I think all of these things, whether they're things you can do at your computer, things that you can do out in the field, will massively kickstart your photography. And even if you're really enjoying your landscape photography, I think it'll start to give you different ideas and different ways of thinking so that you can start to improve and take better photos. So the first point, point number one is making sure you actually go out and do some photography and go out to new locations, go to new destinations, explore new areas around where you live, but spend more time and more importantly, more money than you do on your camera equipment. I talk very little about gear in my on my channel. Occasionally I do because I love gear. I, I like it. So occasionally I can't resist and I want to talk about something, but gear doesn't make any difference to how good your photo is. Okay, it might make it sharper, it might make the colours slightly different, but ultimately it's not going to make any difference. Whatever camera anybody's got, whether it's an iPhone or um, a medium format Hasselblad, it doesn't matter. You can take amazing shots with it. So really to get the best shots, to get something that you think, I really want to put that on my wall, you've got to go out, you've got to go and explore. If I look at the best photos that I've taken, and that's just not what I think, but what other people think, so you can look at my Instagram feed and look at the top nine photos, or I could look at the photos that I put in my calendar, then they're, 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 they're photos where I've gone out and explored. And that might be Scotland, the Lake District, it might have been Iceland or the Faroe Islands or some, somewhere more you know, exotic. It's just so important to get out, whatever the conditions, because if you don't do that, you'll never get any good photos. If you sat at home watching YouTube all the time, then that's not gonna improve your photography. It might give you a, a little bit of impetus to go out, but you've gotta go out, get your camera, and start shooting. And that is beyond doubt the most important thing to do. And the other thing to remember when you travel is, that you have experiences, you meet people. If I look at a photo that I've taken, I very rarely remember the lens and the camera that I've taken it on. Well, I might do, I'm a bit of a geek like that, but I remember the smells and the noises and the location, and it brings back those, those memories that, that might have sort of been hidden away as well. So it's just a really great experience. Which sort of brings me on to the second point, which is looking back at your images from 2018. So I've always done this. I think it's a really, really good thing to do at the end of the year, so, you know, or the start of the, of the new year, is look back at your images from 2018 and look at your successes, but also look at your failures and try and find out what, what hasn't worked. So it might be one of two things. It might be a location that you've been to, like this location that I went to in Scotland that I, I looked back at at the end of um, last year, and then when, when I went back to it this year, I improved my composition and it made a really big difference to that second shot that I got compared to that first shot that I got. So I learned something from that experience and by looking back at my images before I went, then that, that made a big difference. But also, I find that looking back at your images, you see something you think, well actually, 
I could do something more with that and it might be a type of image that you've taken. So take, for instance, something that I'm gonna try again this year, which is this cotton grass. Um, I went and took this cotton grass. It was the first time I'd really shot cotton grass with such strong light. And what I'm gonna do now is go back and improve my shot. I'm gonna get lower, I'm gonna try and have the cotton grass going into the sunset a little bit more. Now I might not get the same locations, but by looking back and learning something from those shots from 2018, it means I go into 2019 with a little bit of a plan of some things that I'm gonna go and try. And then also look back at the lenses you've used and what lenses you've taken your best shots on. So if, if I look at mine, then I can see that I take lots of wide angle shots, but not, so many of my best ones have been taken on my 70 to 200, although I love using that lens. So why is that? So I'm gonna try and make a purposeful effort in 2019 to use my longer lens more and try and get better shots with that. Okay, so the next point, point number three, is just presentation of your images. So get away from digital. Stop just posting your images on Flickr or Instagram or Facebook and actually print your images. Now that might just be let me get an image, get a photo, get a photo. So that might be printing an image like this that I printed, took of the puffins here um, when I was in the Faroe Islands, or it may be just printing them a little bit smaller than that. It may be that you're gonna put them on your wall, but also what, what I'm gonna do in 2019, and this is through um, a lady called Anita that I follow on Twitter. She's an amazing photographer from, from the Northeast. And she printed this year, uh, I think it was an image or two images every week and put them in a scrapbook. So I've got a scrapbook and then I'm gonna, in this scrapbook, I'm gonna print small images and every week I'm just gonna put them in this scrapbook and that way, I'll have something to look back at at the end of the year. Now, if you haven't got your own printer, I don't think that really matters because there's lots of online services that you can get fairly cheap prints made. And a lot of them, when you first sign up, they'll give you free prints. And I'm only talking about small prints that you'll put in a scrapbook, but it, what it'll mean is that you can see the progression of your photography over, over time. And trust me, it's so much better having something tangible, something you can actually hold in your hands. It just makes a really big difference. So this is um, a photo book that I did, and that's another good idea, really, uh, as a presentation idea. At the end of the year, I went back to last year and, and printed out all my best photos and put them in this book. And Again, at this time of year, you find that a lot of these online print companies have good offers on, so you can go to them and probably get 50, maybe 60% off. And you don't need to print something as big as this, you could print a smaller thing. But having something that you can just hold and look at your photos means you appreciate them in a different way. And I think it also improves your photography because you can actually look at them and then just think, yeah, that, 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 could be improved in that way and you can sit down with your coffee, you know, just, just, just whilst you're watching TV or just relaxing and just flick through something. I much prefer that than looking things digitally. Okay, onto the fourth thing. And this is something that, again, I'm gonna do going into 2019, is to have a sort of secondary genre that I spend a little bit more time doing and that's, for me, going to be street photography. So when I went to London and Cologne, I did a little bit of street photography. And to be fair, I suck at it. I'm not particularly brilliant at it. But what I realized when I was doing that street photography, there was a lot of analogy with landscape photography. You had to be quite patient. You had to just think about light. You had to think about shapes. There was quite a lot of chaotic um, parts to the landscape. And I'm gonna do a video on it, my one, one in London um, in the next few weeks. But but I think it'll improve my landscape photography by concentrating on, a, on, a, on another genre as well. And I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time doing it, but I'm gonna make a conscious, conscious effort by the end of the year to have five shots that I'm really proud of that are street photography. Okay, onto the fifth thing, which is something that I'm super passionate about. And I know this is difficult for some people because they might live in an inner city or you know, maybe just in areas that are just not interesting. But I do believe that there's something you can find local everywhere. So the fifth one is just shoot local. Find something really close by within a five mile radius and try and shoot it. Go at different times of the year. And it may be that that's where you do your macro photography, where you just shoot leaves close up or you just find a certain tree and you try and shoot it in different lights. 
but I think just by shooting local, it means that you can get out a lot more um, and you're not so dependent on, on traveling to far flung places. And by getting out more will make again a difference to your photography. So just, just try and think of somewhere within a five mile radius that you can go to and do some landscape photography. I'm sure anywhere you are, there's gonna be a park or a tree or a field or some macro photography that you can do. And I think it will significantly, again, improve your photography by going out more. Okay, on to point number six. And this is something that I've done for a long time, but not in the sort of traditional way, but it's, it's, it's taking notes. So I know that a lot of my photography friends have notebooks and they write in their notebooks. And, and I don't really like doing that. I prefer to do it all on my phone and I do it in two ways, really. I have notes that are about a particular location. And then I also take notes about a particular shoot in a location that I go to. So if I go to a location a lot, then I'll, I'll build up notes and photos against that location. So you can see here that this is um, surprise view and I've got lots of notes and lots of pictures that I can go to when I go there that show me the best locations to go in that particular location itself. And then I also, when I go on a shoot, I take notes on, on my phone. So that might be the filters that I used, the height that I have my tripod, things that just don't get measured when you take a shot. So obviously aperture and shutter speed and things like that are all getting measured in the metadata of your, of your image. But there's a lot of things that don't get measured. You know, what the weather was like, you know, like I said, the height of your tripod, what filters you've got on your lens and just those things that you can't measure. And then also I'll take notes saying, um, you know, the reason I didn't move wider because there was a tree in the way and I might take a picture of that and put, and put that in the note as well. And it's just, for me, a really good way of then looking back and, and you know, not having to remember everything when I go to that location again. The seventh thing is around visualization and how that links in with Lightroom. So I think that Lightroom is, is one of the most important parts of photography. I think it's 50% of getting a good image. So 50% is going and taking the photo and 50% is then developing that photo and producing the final, um, final shot. And if you can't visualize what that image is gonna be like in Lightroom, then I think you'll then struggle to get that original image. And the way to do that is to get better at Lightroom so that you know how you can manipulate that image. Now that might sound quite complicated and it's not for this video. I've done lots of um, um, videos and I'll link one here on Lightroom and visualization. But I would concentrate, if you don't use Lightroom a lot, on three things and just, just try and work on three things in Lightroom that you're perhaps not that good at. So for instance, Examples of ones that I, I'd say start with, and you choose different ones if you don't think these are the best, but things like curves, so understanding curves a little bit better and how that can help your image because it allows you to do, manipulate an image in lots of different ways. The HSL slider is something I use in every single image, and when I'm taking a shot, if the colors aren't quite light, right in the shot I'm taking, I know that I can tweak those slightly to blend a little bit better afterwards in the HSL slider. And then the, the final one that I think is again really important is luminosity masks in Lightroom. So again, you could search on YouTube to find how to do those or if you, I'll link to a video where I've, I've used all those here. So they're the seven things. I think if you go and look and concentrate on those seven things, then I really think it'll make a difference to your photography in 2019. It's quite exciting going to a new year. It's really good to have some new year's resolutions. I'd really love to know what your resolutions are. So share them in the comments below and maybe we can get a bit of a, uh, a comment thread going with lots of resolutions, what people's resolutions are and people can get ideas from that as well. Before I go, I just want to say a little bit about the sponsor for this week's video, which is Squarespace. And maybe another resolution, which is build yourself a website. And if you're looking to get a website, then I definitely recommend going to Squarespace. I use them for my website. They've been an absolute fantastic resource for me over the year in building my business because I take all my orders through Squarespace and it just means that I don't have to worry about anything. They just take care of everything. So if you wanna go and get a free trial, then you can go to squarespace.com. And if you're ready to actually purchase Squarespace, you can use forward slash Nigel or the offer code Nigel to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna go and get a mince pie now and 
a port and then I really need to stop eating mince pies and drinking over this Christmas period. I hope everyone has a fantastic New Year's Eve and New Year and until next Sunday, bye.